I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to be talking about the organisation of the flight control system on the Airbus 330, 340 series of aircraft. This flight control system is a very good example of how redundancy and diversity is used in software and hardware to ensure reliability. Airbus are a major European commercial aircraft manufacturer and they were the first commercial manufacturer to introduce what's called fly-by-wire control for passenger aircraft. In a fly-by-wire system, there are no direct hydraulic connections between the cockpit and the flight surfaces. Rather, the manipulation of controls by the pilot causes electronic signals to be generated, interpreted by a computer, which then sends other signals to actuators which are associated with the flight surfaces and causes them to move. The advantage of this approach is that it lessens the weight of the aircraft, which improves its fuel efficiency, and it also allows computer mediation so that pilot actions which might place stresses on the airframe are controlled and, and sometimes stopped. It reduces the workload on pilots. There's less for them to do. The computer takes over some of the actions that previously had to be carried out by the pilots themselves. It contributes to airframe safety because the, the computer disallows pilot actions that might play, place ex exceptional stresses on the airframe. Fly-by-wire systems are critical systems. They're absolutely essential for the maintenance of the aircraft in flight and hence they have to be fault tolerant systems. That is, they have to be able to continue in operation even if hardware and software faults occur. In the Airbus, this fault tolerance is achieved by replicating sensors actuators and computer systems and by providing a, a graceful degradation mode where when things go wrong other systems can kick in which provide less functionality but which still allow the aircraft to be controlled. The Airbus flight control system actually runs on five separate computers. The system runs simultaneously on all five of these computers but only one of them is needed to fly, fly the plane. So it can stand the loss of four computer systems before flying the plane becomes impossible. The computer organization is based around three primary flight control computers. So we have a triple redundancy at the primary computer level. As well as these three primary computers, there are two secondary computers. Control switches to these secondary computers if the primary computers are unavailable, but these have a simpler functionality which is simply concerned with ensuring that the aircraft remains flyable by the pilot. It makes extensive use of software and hardware diversity. There are primary and secondary systems which use different processors. The primary and secondary systems use chipsets from different manufacturers so that in the event of a fabrication failure this is not replicated across all of the computers. The software in secondary systems is less complex than in the, the primary systems, but it provides essential functionality. So it can be more extensively validated because of its lower complexity. The architecture of the computers in the Airbus is what's called a self-monitoring architecture, where each computer has in fact two channels, each of which has its own processor. The same software executes on each channel and when a computation is made, the results are compared. If the results are the same, then it's assumed that computation is correct. If not, it assumes something has gone wrong and that computer shuts down and automatically transfers control to one of the other flight control computers. This diagram shows you what happens. So an input signal is split so that it's sent across each channel. The computation carried out 
and a comparator checks that these are the same and in fact that they've been carried out at the same time. It then passes on the output value plus a status value to say whether the computation has been successful or not. The processors in each of the channels are provided by different manufacturers and the software in each of the channels is diverse. It was developed by different teams, hence reducing the likelihood that there will be a, a common problem in each channel. The Airbus takes this multi-channel self-monitoring architecture and combines it into an architecture such as that shown in this picture where we have the fallback from the primary computers to backup primary computers and finally to the second to the secondary flight control computers. But all of these are multi-channel architectures. So what you can see is that there are many different computations being carried out simultaneously. As well as the software in each channel being different, the primary computers and the secondary computers use different software. So there are in fact four versions of the software developed for the Airbus, one for each channel in the primary systems and one for each channel in the secondary systems. This can cope with common error across the primary and secondary systems. The flight control system can be reconfigured dynamically to cope with the loss of system resources. So if things start to go wrong, the system can change itself to become a simpler system, which makes less demands in the hardware, re re requires less computational capability. As well as redundancy within the flight control system, the sensors, actuators and connections are also duplicated so that the system can cope with a loss of a sensor, say, on flight, because there is a backup system which will provide the same information. In summary then, the Airbus flight control system is a very good example of how redundant hardware and software are used to achieve fault tolerance. It, base, it is based on quintuple redundancy, five computers, where each computer have two channels, each running different processors and software. Of the five computers, three are primary computers, two are secondary, and they also run different hardware and software. To my knowledge, there have been no failures of the flight control system in the history of Airbus operation, so it, the overall approach that's used has been successful.